Hi everyone, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today I'm going to teach you how to optimize your filtration. And we're going to do it on for like a nano tank, we're going to do it for medium sized filters and large filters. It's one of the most asked questions and one of the things I talk about the most but have shown the least. So uh, today we're going to be using uh, a Finix PX5 hang on back filter. You can see my video on the channel or you can order it from our website. Little nano filter works great for five to seven gallon tanks. We're gonna optimize this. Uh, we're also gonna do, you know, one of the filters I hate the most. I bought this on Amazon. This is the Marine Lamp Penguin 350 Bio Wheel. We're gonna show you what I would do if I was using this. And this is assuming you already own it, because otherwise I'd buy something else, but we'll go with what you got. And then we're also going to do a, uh, Aqua Clear 70, that's what I've got right here. We're gonna optimize this as well. So, make sure you stay tuned and we're gonna go through it all and I guarantee by the end of this video, you will have a lot to change about your hang on bags. All right, so first we're gonna work with a nano filter and the reason being it's gonna be the easiest to show so you can see the inner workings of it. So. Out of the box, we're gonna get this opened up here. We've got a tiny little filter, all right? So obviously meant for a small aquarium, but it's the easiest for me to handle, so we'll use this. Standard hang on back, if you didn't already know, it's gonna pull water into the intake. That's what this is called, is an intake. Put water through the media that we have on the inside. So water is gonna come through here, through the impeller, and then it's gonna come through our media, then splash back out into the aquarium. Simple enough. This one comes with uh, a little intake. And we'll go ahead and install that. And so it's got extension pieces. We can put those together. That'll make it go deeper into the aquarium. When it goes deeper, that's a good thing. Because we're pulling water from the bottom of the aquarium, uh, it'll get the best circulation possible. So. What this filter comes with, it comes with a little piece of sponge, okay? That'll grow beneficial bacteria. It's also a source of mechanical filtration. And then it comes with a cartridge. This has carbon in it and a fine filter pad. Now, this, when it's installed in here, the way it comes is uh, that the, sp the sponge here goes behind the uh, cartridge. So what that does is natively, put this down here the water is going to come into the unit and it's going to pass through this sponge get all the coarse debris out then go through the carbon okay that's not so bad but let me install this the way they want it installed which takes a second here apparently on camera it's not optimal by the way uh, just the way you install this, but all right. So now we've got it the way they want it. You can see right in here, you know, so the water comes in through here and it's going to spill over to here and come through here. Now what you're noticing is there's a lot of open space. That's all wasted space. Uh, also realize that we can do a few more modifications. So the first thing I always recommend, the easiest thing anyone can do is get a sponge on the intake. So get something here to keep f small f fish, food, shrimp, babies, all that kind of stuff from getting sucked into this filter. So let me go ahead and find the correct one. And like on my website, that's gonna be the mini intake sponge. It's a little fine foam. It slips right onto the intake here. Now it's a tad bit loose on this one, but what happens is, being that it's a little bit uh, sticks out here, your aquarium will hold it in place. So your aquarium tends to pinch it a little bit right there, it holds it for you, and this is your first line of defense. Now, when you install a sponge filter, it's best, so if we see the slits here, these are the slits, it's best that if only those slits are covered by the foam. So instead of putting this all the way to the bottom, just put it so it just covers these slits. That way it can pull water from this area, but all the way down here as well. If we push it all the way up, it's only gonna pull water from this area, and once that gets clogged, it, it pinches it off. So we wanna use it to its max potential there. 
so yeah, that's an intake on this the, the a sponge on the intake right there. That is an optimization. So when we compare it to the sponge on the inside, so here we go. We've got you know let's say we roll this up here. I'm going to roll it up. This little sponge. So this is how much sponge is inside of the filter. Now if we compare it to this, you can see that this already is like twice as big as this. So simply put, by putting an intake sponge on there, we're going to uh, triple the capacity of this filter. So if it could have handled one guppy, which it can handle more than that, but let's say it handled one guppy, by putting this intake sponge on there, now we can handle three guppies with a simple $2.99 upgrade on a $20 filter. Right there, we're going to get a lot of bang for our buck. But not only does it increase the surface area, it increases the way or it increases the optimization by now food can't get sucked into these slits right here and sit back here and rot. Instead, a piece of food comes along, it gets sucked to the filter, and a fish can still come by and eat it. So we improve it on multiple levels there. Now, since this is not secure on there, I'm going to set this off to the side while I work on the rest of this. So we noticed that this was not optimal in here. The way uh, it's got a sponge and a cartridge. The cartridges cost you money. Also, we're throwing away a portion of our bacteria, which becomes less of an issue when we have the intake sponge. But what if we could utilize all of this area in here instead of just using utilizing this much area which is a pretty small cross section we can hot rod it so what i like to do is i like to fill it with sponge material or bio rings or something like that now i found that an aqua clear 30 sponge another 299 upgrade i believe this is the right size is this the one here yeah so now, this amount of sponge, if we look at this here, and we compare it to what we had, you know, we're going to put them side by side. They're basically the same size uh, in terms of, like, surface area. But you can see, like, clearly way thicker here, way thinner. And so, yeah, you've got your cartridge, and you've got this. If we ditch these two, and we put just this block of foam in there, and I'm going to put it in right like this and we just kind of put that in there and we can it's a pretty snug fit you can cut it down a tiny little bit if you wanted but now if you take a look at that look how much surface area is in there it's a huge amount we pull water in through it's going to come down in here i'm trying to and come through it's going to come all the way through this sponge now full disclaimer here anytime you modify a filter you could void the warranty. You could cause a, a, a backup in the system. So if we cram so much stuff in here that water can't get through, it could overflow. And so realize by optimizing, we're changing the way the manufacturer has designed this filter to work. Do it at your own risk. That being said, you can get a lot of bang for your buck. So we have a $20 filter here. We put a $3 intake on it. We replace what it had with $3 worth of sponge that we get to reuse this forever. This is going to last probably 10 years of use. This cartridge lasts about a week. And these cartridges, I think I sell them on the website because you got to carry the cartridges you sell a, uh, for a filter. I want to say you get two of them for five bucks, something like that. And... Uh, you know, but I strongly recommend you modify this filter to be much more efficient. So when we look at what the filter came with, which is this sponge and this little uh, cartridge, and now we compare it to what we've done to it. So now we've got this much surface area to grow bacteria versus this. And so when you put these together, you know, you can clearly see that this side is you know so it's it's at least this right here to this it's at least double so we've got double here and we established that this was double here so now we have uh four times the amount of filtration for uh 
uh, as opposed to this. This costs us six dollars. We never really need to replace it. Usable forever. And so for six dollars plus some shipping, obviously, you can hot rod this little hang on back filter for let's say your betta, your dwarf frogs, your little guppy tank into something that can really handle some load. Now we saw just how simple that was. We just had to use off the shelf products. We invested six dollars. So now let's start looking at some more advanced setups. You know, something not quite as small here. I'm gonna set all this off to the side and we're gonna move to uh, something like the AquaClear, okay? We're gonna save the one I hate for last because that's what I get to do because I'm making the video. So here, same thing. We have no media in this one currently at the moment. Nothing at all. It comes with a sponge, uh, you know, in here. And then it would have bio rings, and then it would have um, uh, carbon as well. But the first initial thing we can do right away, if we were to get an intake sponge, like one of these big ones would work. You know, that works. It's a little bit loose. you got to use the aquarium to hold it on there. Or you can also use... Let me grab it right here. This kit. This I sell on my website. It's a pre-filter kit and it's made to make it easy for you guys. So it comes with a bunch of adapters. That's the first thing is there's a bunch of ways to adapt this to a filter. Now it doesn't adapt to every single filter, but it does adapt to quite a few. You know, like this here is a very small intake. Can I adapt it to... Can I adapt it to this? Uh, almost. I'm very close to making this work. It's not quite going to work. Wait, yes it would. If I take this off. Boom. I've now adapted this. And let's go here. Let's put an elbow on this thing. Boom. I've got an elbow. And then this intake sponge that comes with it. Let me just set this up here. Of boom, now I have this giant sponge on the intake of this tiny little filter. Now, I realize this in a five gallon tank is ginormous, but you could have this in your aquarium, and yes, this is like 10 times the amount of filtration all on this little motor. It would work amazing. So, just showing you, it can adapt to even a small one, but let's adapt it to this big Aqua Clear, right? So, the Aqua Clear, we're gonna take the intake here. So here we go, we've got the intake. Now we need to make it fit on there. So here's a sleeve. I've grabbed the wrong sleeve here. Oh no, I put it on backwards. Sleeve fits it just fine, right? Perfect. Now, what if I grab this elbow that we had on here? Now I have an intake. Look at that. And it's off the wall. Now if I didn't want to take it off the wall, there should be a straight piece somewhere in here, I believe, to make myself be able to do this. Uh, let's see here. Maybe I have to take it off the wall. Maybe they won't allow it to not come off the wall in this one. Because I don't think it can possibly work. Because it's too fat. But anyway. So there we go. We have got it at an angle. And the way you service this is the this kind of comes apart here. So that this end plug comes out. And you've got all this sponge that's now your pre-filter. And it's, it works amazingly well. So, boom, you put this back on your intake here. Now you've got an intake down low. It'll keep sand out of the filter from hurting it. It keeps food and fish and shrimp, all those things out. Let's say you wanted to really maximize the filtration side. Like, this is a little more manageable for people to hide behind plants and rock. But let's say you really just wanted, you had Oscars, and you're going, oh my god, I've got so much waste. You could put this big intake sponge on this as well and that'll really beef up your capacity now obviously this one is bigger than this one right clearly bigger but you know you got to fit what's going to fit in your aquarium now this also fits like an aqua clear uh 30 and 50 and 70 and 110 if it's all of them this one like this big one only fits the 70 and the 110 this will also fit canister filters so will this one so you know this one's got options though that's the important part runs about 13 bucks this one runs i think about 12 bucks but that's your first hot rod uh portion of this okay so we've got our intake on this aqua clear boom now, when it comes to the basket itself, 
It's going to come with a sponge. Let me grab one. I've got one right here. Now let me get this open. So it comes with some sponge. Just like this. Boom. I think this is actually... Yeah, there we go. So now you've got that. What I personally do is I put another sponge right on top of it. So we go over here. We grab another sponge. Yeah, you can use the bio rings that come with it. But they're not quite enough because... It also has space for carbon. Now what I would do is I would put two blocks of sponge, just like this, and then I put the bio rings on top of it. Now, I don't know where my bio rings currently are. I've got bio rings in my bag here to show you, but uh, so let's put this back in. And this is also why I love AquaClear hang on backs, by the way, because they're already designed to be really optimal. And that's an important distinction here is they really want it to be optimal as opposed to most places trying to nickel and dime you to death with uh, cartridges. There's no cartridges here. So now we've got two sponges in there. We've got a sponge on the intake. And if I was to grab, you know, let's say this thing of bio rings that kind of comes with a an AquaClear, or maybe you're buying some of my web, my web, ah, my website because you're out or you don't have enough, and you stuff that in the top here. This is a little bit too many, and we'll show you how to break that down into more manageable size. But now, now you really have a powerhouse filter. You've got you know sponge, sponge, bio rings, sponge, and the surface area on this thing is huge. And with more surface area, we can grow more bacteria. So now we have an optimized hang on back AquaClear filter. Look at this thing. You know, you can't fit more media in there. There's no wasted space. And that's the important part. We've, we've got a pre-filter. We're going to keep the insides here clean as we can. And then we're going to keep these bio wings really clean. So that's, that's how you optimize an AquaClear. It doesn't matter whether it's an AquaClear 20 or 110. They're all the same. Just different size sponges, different amount of bio rings, an intake sponge. All that works the same. Now, I actually lied because I have another one to hot rod. I forgot that I bought this filter as well because this is like the cheapest filter on the market. I don't even sell it. Here it is, the quiet one. This is the quiet 110. A lot of people get these in their first aquarium kits ever. You know, you bought a kit at, you know, PetSmart or whatever it was, and it comes with this filter. Let me get this open. It comes with some coupons, obviously, because they want you to buy their crap. Okay, so we've got this open here. Uh oh, that was oh, I didn't need that piece anyway. Phew. Anyway, uh, so this is what it looks like on the inside. It's not horrible, like it's not the worst ever, but we can still optimize it. So first, here's the intake. What can we do? We can put a sponge on it. Okay, so let me install that. Let me, boom. We have an intake. Now, oh, I probably did need that piece. Let me find that piece right here. Perfect. So let's see if this will adapt to it. Not quite, this one doesn't fit. So this is not gonna work easily on this intake. Good thing I sell another product that does because I've run into this before and that would be the medium, I sell some website also, the medium intake sponge. Guess what? Oh, right there, perfect. Fits on nicely. Yeah, it's got a hole all the way through it, but like on these, they have intake strainers right down there. So, works awesome. So that's the first step. Hot rod the intake. We do that always. That's the easiest thing to do. Now we take a look at what we've got going on on the inside here. This is what we got to work with. We basically, the water is going to come in right here, and it flows into the, the side over here and spills out to the front. Now this comes with it. I think we run this the whole time because it's just extra place to grow bacteria, right? So let me get this in there. It's kind of a snug fit, there we go. So we've got that. Now that just leaves us that open part. Now we can use their cartridge system, which I'm not a fan of. I'm just gonna be honest, Let's, we're not a fan. So how do we hot rod this thing? Uh, it's kind of a narrow sponge in there. Let's try, did I find one that fits? Yeah, I think I found the AquaClear 50 sponge would fit in there. Let's try that. So that's one option. I think I've got a couple of options for you on this one. So we grab that. 
big block of sponge, which is, you know, more surface area than what was provided for sure. We can, it's hard to do this upside down. I'm gonna set this off to the side for a second. We can basically put a piece of sponge down in there. And now we have got, you know, a lot of surface area in there, surface area in there, and it's reusable. That's a Yahtzee. Uh, the other thing you can do, let's say you didn't want to use sponge, because it's a tight fit in there for sure. The other thing you can do is you can get bio rings. Let me grab some bio rings. We had them in our aqua clear here. We're going to grab these. Now, the problem is this is too many bio rings. Like this is from the website, right? It's too many bio rings. It's way too many for this filter. So what you do is you grab a thing of bio rings, but then you come over here and you grab a filter bag. And the filter bag is just gonna allow us to put some bio rings into this filter. So here we go, filter bag, we're gonna pour some in, and then we're gonna put that into our filter here. And so it's just like that, we're gonna get some going right into the bag. If I can get them out there, there we go. And it's probably gonna be about half this bag is all we need for this little, little filter. Now if you had a bigger one like a quiet 120 or the 30 or the 50 or the 70 obviously you're gonna need more but you know I think that's not enough yet but we can test so you get it and you just go how's that gonna fit in there and you kinda gotta make it flat so it fits that, that might do it actually that might you know so we kinda flatten it out And so now you basically have this nice flat piece. And so now you have optimized the bio rings. So the bio rings have filled up all the media space that was in there. We put this back on and now you've really got, you know, some effective filtration if I can get, there we go. Cause we've got this intake sponge We've got this, and we've got all these bio rings when all we had before, remember, all that was there before was this. You know, and this is just a little plastic thing holding a cruddy little pad here, if I can get this one handed out. All we had, things are falling on the floor, was this little pad that has a little bit of carbon and a little bit of filter floss. So now we, we can just handle an insane load. And so that's when I talk about it's gonna depend on your fish keeping. It's gonna depend on your filtration. It's gonna depend on all these things when you ask how many fish can I keep in my 10 gallon. If you have a 10 gallon that's optimized for its filtration, you're a lot closer to keeping a lot of fish than you are if you're just running a stock filter. Now, you can see here, just like in our other examples, you might have to run four of these or five of these to equal what we just made out of one of them because the surface area is so low. So. We're gonna move on to the next one even. So now we get to the filter I don't like. It's the bio wheels. But nevertheless, just because I don't like it doesn't mean you guys don't like it and you shouldn't use it. Uh, so we go over here, brand new, out of the box. Let me go ahead and get this bad boy out for you. All right, so here we are. To remove the tops because they're going to fall off 20 times in this video if I don't remove them. Uh, I'm going to take out parts and cards. Here's the cartridges it comes with. We'll set those off to the side. And the bio wheels. We're going to use these, but you know. So now I can show you. Here's what we've got we've got a motor and two big spaces uh, for media, okay? So first things first, what do we always do? We put an intake sponge on it, all right? And I get th I get this question once every two days at least. So let's get this set up here. So we've got our intake. All right, we're gonna close this so that it has to suck it all the way from the bottom. Now the biggest question I get is, how do I put an intake sponge on this? Because there's this big strainer, nothing fits it. Here you go remove the strainer. So we take that off, then you put a big sponge filter on it, large intake, boom, we're done. Now we've just added a massive amount. And so look at this. 
We've got this right here. We've got this big sponge. This sponge is essentially equal to one of these compartments. So by putting this sponge on here, we're adding an insane amount. Now we're gonna optimize these, but when we're done, realize that here's what we're comparing to. We've got standard here. I'm, I gotta open one of these up. Not that I'm gonna sell it, but. So I gotta show you how this would stock be used first. So then I can show you how we're gonna optimize this. So first, always know that you want the fine filter pad to hit the water first before the carbon. So you want that facing backwards towards the back. So this is what you would typically see. And every one of you that owns one of these is going, yep, that's how they come, or yep, that's how I run it. And you've got your bio wheels, okay? We're still gonna use the bio wheels, so don't worry. But look how much space we are wasting where the water goes. I would say it's 80% or more we're wasting where the water is going to go, okay? And so I'm gonna do one more thing just in case you guys don't know how this works. Uh, this is where the water is going to come in. So we're going to put that into place just so you guys can see and kind of, if you've never used this filter before, you can understand how it works. So water comes in, then the water itself gets shot out the back here, each side shoots it out to the back and then it flows forward. Okay. So we've established this is the way it comes and you get some bios. We're still going to use the bio wheels. So that's why I'm kind of taking out of the equation for now, but I think we all can agree we could really make this better. So let me get this out of the way here, make my life a little easier. So first, ditch these cartridges. They're gonna run you too much money, they're gonna cost you, and whenever you throw them out, you're removing your biological. So, AquaClear 70 sponge, make this easy on ourselves. What did I find? I found, look at this. Boop, fits right in there, check that out. So there's one, guess what? We can fit two though. So I gotta grab some out of this AquaClear over here. I've really got a mess going on on my desk. There's a lot of filters and a lot of packaging here. So we take another one. And we take another one. And there's gotta be one more in here somewhere. I know I brought enough. Right, oh no, that's empty. What have I done? Wait, is it not empty? It's just light, it's a sponge, who knew? There we go. So now, look at this thing. We have got lots and lots of surface area in there. There is way more. So the comparison here is we now have this much surface area, which is a lot, which one side, so we're only doing one side at the moment. So you have this or you have this. You know, you stack those up side by side. Which one do you think harbors more bacteria? This thing that's about a half inch thick or this thing that's like four inches thick? So we basically have taken, I don't even know, like one sponge is going to be, let's just make this easy. Let's say this is equal to half this sponge, okay? And we're running four of these sponges when we were only running one of these. So uh, that means we're increasing the biological here by four times the amount easily, okay? And now if we establish that once we put our intake back on, here we go, boom, intake, we establish this would be equal to like a whole nother compartment. So we started out with two little intakes or two little pads that go inside that we established are equal to one sponge. We are now running equivalent to six sponges. So we have made the uh, optimization of this filter six times the ability that it had. It now can process six times as much waste and have six times as much uh, biological capacity. It's also more efficient in the way that we're not gonna suck up food, we're not gonna suck up small fish, we're not gonna suck up plant leaves. And all the while, we still get to use these bio wheels, which I do hate because eventually they stop spinning. And the problem is, when they're not optimized like this, people are relying on this. So now in this system with these bio wheels, the bio wheels are a very small portion of the overall filtration here. Like this thing seriously is a powerhouse. Now, the problem becomes we had to spend some money to do this. It's a one-time cost though. So intake sponge is 12 bucks. 
These sponges are about seven bucks. We use four of them, so that's 28 bucks. We're looking at what, 40 bucks? We spent 40 bucks, but we have, so if we establish that it's equal to six times. So for 40 bucks, we essentially have made five additional filters like this. I think I paid 35 or 40 bucks for this. So yeah, while we spent 40 bucks, we get the biological capacity of $200. And on top of that, it doesn't take more electricity. It doesn't take up any more space or anything like that. So that's when I talk about in all the Q&A videos and all that, when I'm talking about optimizing your filtration, this is the kind of thinking I'm doing. And so every filter can be optimized somehow. It's up to you to figure it out. Is it adding more bio rings? Is it adding sponges? Is it adding an intake? An intake's the easiest and biggest change you can do. I'm a believer that every intake out there should always have an intake sponge on it. It makes the biggest difference. But on top of that, optimizing what you got to play with. Now, I do want to bring it up again. We could, war we could uh, void the warranty because we're not using their cartridges and stuff like that. Technically, if we didn't service this after a long enough period of time, we could overflow because our media comes pretty high here. But I maintain any, you know, if you don't maintain this, eventually it's going to flood. You know, it might take three years, but eventually this will flood your house also. So this is all assuming you're going to do kind of monthly maintenance and things like that. This is not an excuse to neglect filters. This is just to make them much, much, much more efficient and optimized for your specific aquarium. I've shown you lots of tools, whether it's the sponges in different sizes, whether it's the intake sponges in different sizes, or it's the little kit that it gives you different adapters. All of those things will pay themselves off 50 fold over the course of your career in fish keeping. So I hope that, you know, I hope you come away from this video going, okay, I don't own that specific filter, but I now know how I can make my filter better because whether you have an Eheim filter or it's a canister filter or it's a, you know, I'm trying to think of, you know, a Sun Sun canister. I'm trying to think of other hang on backs that I can't think of off the top of my head, but no matter what the brand is, realize you can optimize it and the company doesn't optimize it because it's in their best interest not to. The worse this performs, the more of them you need, the more cartridges you need to buy, that type of thing. So realize I'm here to save you money. Yes, you'll have to buy some products to save you money long term, but I think we've all found in our lives there's specific products you can buy that make sense and pay for themselves time and time and time again. And all the products I've shown you here don't need to be replaced, whether it's sponge, whether it's rings, things like that. Spend your money there not on cartridges. So everything I've shown you here in the video, except for the Marine Land Hang On Back filter is available on my website. In the description, there's a link to each item. And that way you can help yourself get the right items you need and not have to search the entire internet. And it helps me by buying this stuff. It makes me make more videos like this. If you guys like this video, share it around, get the word out. That's, you know, I, I say this stuff all the time and not enough people see it. You know, if you were a new hobbyist, think of the amount of money you'd save until now. If you're just learning this now and you've been in the hobby for 10 years, how much money would you have saved until now had you known these tips? So share them to your local clubs, your local Facebook groups, all those things. And when someone's asking a question like, is my filter okay? Link this video to them and help them out. You know, I'm doing my part here to educate you guys. I have to rely on you guys to help educate other people. If we all help one person, we all get helped, right? So thanks so much, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Uh, I'll see you in the live streams. And I hope I helped you today. And thanks for watching.